Earlier today, I caught up with the political consultant Hank Scheinkoff to get his take on all the courtroom drama. Thank you for joining us tonight, Mr. Scheinkoff. Fios is lucky to have you, Dominic. Well, Let's be thank clear you. about that. Thank you. That's very, very kind and very nice of you to say. Quid pro quo. Right. Quid pro quo. Not one witness, not one testified of a direct quid pro quo. Right. Not even star prosecution witness, right. Dr. Taub. Now, let's just look at this for a second. Sure. Silver, using tax dollars, provides two grants to Columbia University cancer research doctor, Tob. Mm -hmm. Tob refers to silver, lucrative referrals of cancer patients, and off of those referrals, as a lawyer, silver pulls in $3.3 million. Right. So what you're saying is that Taub referred to Silver's law firm. Let's be very clear about that. And the real question is... Whites and Luxembourg. Correct. Whites and Luxembourg, which is Silver's law firm, and Silver makes a living off that. People must be kidding. They think this is crazy. In the old days, before it was uh, less than clear, lawyers would, be, would appear before the State Liquor Authority and every other regulatory body, and guess who those lawyers were? State legislators. So we're being ridiculous. Is this a crime? I'm not a lawyer, but what I do know is there's nothing here that is in violation of practice and what we've seen in Albany and from Albany for a long time to come. These were never supposed to be full-time jobs in the legislature. These are part-time jobs. How are you supposed to make a living? Now, you can say that the amount of money that Speaker, former Speaker Silver made is excessive, but by the same token, he's making money. How are you supposed to live on those salaries? This is not a full-time job, and it was never meant to be. Folks watching you tonight, right now, Hank Scheinkoff, may hold their nose they may actually hold their nose and say the process in Albany stinks. How does this all play out? They may hold their nose, they may say this stinks, but if you want a full-time legislature and full disclosure, you're going to have to pay the appropriate amount of money. California has a full-time legislature. They still have people going to jail. You've got to pay the money. And I don't think the taxpayers uh, are ready to do that. U.S. Attorney Preet Bharara, I've been sitting adjacent to him in the courtroom, and we exchanged pleasantries, uh, but of course he declined comment. Hank Scheinkoff, what's at stake for the U.S. Attorney? There is certainly a history in the region and throughout the nation of high-profile prosecutors creating extraordinary careers, both in the private and public sector, once these kinds of cases occur. I mean, we have Chris Christie, who was the U.S. Attorney of New Jersey before he became governor, who was able to prosecute high-level public officials and get successfully, and guess what? He's the governor. Um, Tom Dewey ran for governor twice. He was a special prosecutor in New York and assistant attorney general. Um, he was a rackets prosecutor. Now, he became the governor, but he lost the presidency. That being said, uh, it depends what Mr. Bahara wants to do. Rudy Giuliani became the mayor because he was the U.S. attorney. He was the guy in the papers every day. It is a very powerful job, and Bob Morgenthau wanted to be a statewide elected official, but instead, after leaving the U.S. Attorney's Office, became uh, the DA and remained there for th more than three decades. It depends what he wants. Either he's going to be, my hunch, Preet Bahara probably wouldn't mind being the U.S. Attorney General in a Democratic administration, high-profile place, U.S. Attorney's Office in New York, and a high-profile place being the Attorney General, or maybe he's looking at elected office like so many of people who've held that position for have done. So politics on all level for everyone and this may be a stepping stone for the US attorney it could be a stepping stone also to a lucrative career in uh, the private sector or being appointed to a judgeship there are people from who's been in that office who've done that or the uh, former now the head of the FBI I think was the US attorney for the Southern District of New York I mean this is serious Governor Cuomo someone you like and you've worked with for mm -hmm. and against more, by the more, way and against uh, for more than 30 years so my question to you is, the other day, the governor, mm -hmm. and there have been rumors of Preet Bharara looking at Cuomo uh, investiga for an investigation, but there, uh, the governor the other day took credit and said, listen, it's my reforms, meaning the governor, Governor Cuomo, that led, in terms of increasing disclosure right. for public officials that led to this silver situation. Is that accurate? Disclosure is important, and that may be what's lacking. You know, if you're not going to pay people, and you, uh, the amount of money they need to live, and you're going to, in a part-time position, which you're trying to make full-time because there's more services involved, 
like community liaison work and all the other things that legislators, legislators really never did going back 30 years ago. This is nonsense. And you're not going to pay them, then you need to disclose and let them earn, right? The governor deserves credit for some of this. Why? Who was the last attorney general that made sure that a, a, a corrupt controller for the state of New York, the largest, I think, the, probably the largest or the second largest investor of public pension funds in the country, the common fund, who was the last time that somebody put someone like that away? Well, Andrew Cuomo put Alan Hevesy and the people involved in that scandal away. So it certainly creates his bona fides as a corruption fighter. He didn't have to do it. He was never part of the old fellows or old man's or old woman's network. He did what he thought was right. And he has talked about disclosure. Now, the legislature may not want to pass the things that he wants, but certainly Governor Cuomo has been very public about it. Dean Skelos and his son, Adam Skelos. I have been in the courtroom just about every other day. It's not looking good for them, Hank. Dean Skelos has been an extraordinary public servant, and I can say this uh, with full, uh, with disclosure, that when he ran for state senate the first time, I'm the guy that did the campaign that beat him. So I understand that. I mean, uh, he is, uh, he has done, he has been a good public servant, and this is tragic to see someone with that history um, going through this thing. Why? He helped his son. Well, who's he supposed to help? His enemies? Tom Libus, the same thing. Extraordinary public servant. And, you know, he, replaced, he was in war, the, in that part of the state, in Broome County, in the Southern Tier, in Binghamton, where you have Warren Anderson's seat in the Senate. That is an extraordinary thing. And downstaters really don't understand the importance of the state Senate. Those seats mean a lot to people north of Orange County. It's really quite something. Tom Libus, what did he do? He helped his son. There's something absurd about trying people and putting them in trial and putting them in court for the fact that they helped their son. Who are they supposed to help? But their you enemies? can't break the law. Well, again, let's talk. I'm not a lawyer, but I do know one thing. What is, what is the custom in Albany and what is the appropriate behavior? And what's the difference about helping someone who, if you're a city councilman or anything else, or a city councilwoman, who are you supposed to help? Your enemies? You help people you know, by and large. And lobbyists bring them to you, and others you know bring them to you, and they, you meet them through fundraisers and all these other kinds of events. What are you supposed to do? Help people you don't know? You should, but that's not how it works. People who have access to power tend to get benefits. People who don't have access to power don't get the benefits. That's why we have reform candidates like Bill de Blasio running, because they say they can bring power to everybody. But even those expectations are very difficult. I I'm glad you brought up Mayor de Blasio. And my final question tonight for you, Hank Scheinkoff, the mayor's polling numbers are not good. I is he looking like a one-term mayor? We are now, let's see, a little under two years away from a mayoral primary and a mayoral election in New York City in 2017. Anything can happen in politics any minute, and it often does. And that period of time is like 300 years in politics. Can the mayor be reelected? You bet. Can the mayor lose? You bet. Let's see what happens. Up next, analysis from our panel of attorneys.